Whether you operate one forklift or thousands, one location or hundreds, the new My Toyota customer portal can help you optimize your operation and material handling equipment. This one-stop, free-to-use platform is designed to help you take control of your information and make smarter decisions, all at the touch of a button. Register and access your data today at my.toyotaforklift.com. That's my.toyotaforklift.com. Today's warehouse needs to keep inventory moving smoothly and quickly. Meet these challenges with on-demand warehouse labeling from Brother Mobile Solutions. Our mobile and industrial printers will help optimize your operations to achieve the speed, reliability, and durability your warehouse needs. With easy integration for existing warehouse technology, convenient portability, and upfront affordability, Brother Mobile Solutions is at your side when it comes to warehouse labeling. Try one for free today by visiting brothermobilesolutions.com slash new warehouse or click the link in the show notes. That's it's brothermobilesolutions.com slash new warehouse to try one for free today. The New Warehouse Podcast, hosted by Kevin Lawton, is your source for insights and ideas from the distribution, transportation, and logistics industry. A new episode every Monday morning brings you the latest from industry experts and thought leaders. And now, here's Kevin. Hey, it's Kevin Lawn with the New Warehouse Podcast here at ProMat 2023 in the booth. Joined by my old friend, Harold Van Ass of Enersys. Harold, how are you? Welcome to the booth. Great, Kevin. It's excellent to be with you like it is and always on these shows. Yes, Great absolutely. Great to see you growing. Awesome. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. It's a lot of fun. And, you know, first off, I appreciate the sport always from the beginning. Uh, ProMat 2019, actually. I think that's when we met. The it last ProMat in last person. The last in-person yeah. ProMat. What a, what a, what, it's great to be back. And boy, it's the show busy. Yes, super busy, super busy. So we're on day three. So tell us a little bit about how the how the show's been for you. You know, it's been, fanta- first, fantastically busy. Mm-hmm. Uh, but what was interesting to me to think about the trends that we're seeing, what people are asking for, talking about, uh, mm. in four years, right? So yeah. labor, can't get enough labor. Equipment takes forever to get. Yes. Sustainability mm-hmm. is a big, big topic this year. So those are the things that folks are coming in and wanting to talk about. Mm-hmm. How do you solve that? Right. So, so, all right. You know, I think reducing labor costs has always been a, a, a focus for folks. Mm-hmm. You know, getting good return on investment, good total cost of ownership. But this is just, I can't get people. So yeah. what can we do to eliminate some of those jobs? Because mm-hmm. I can't get people to fill them. So, yeah. Wow. Okay. It's a spin on the same thing, but... Mm-hmm. A lot more urgency. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I, I think that's the thing. I mean, even you know, we look at Modex last year. Right? I mean, that was the yeah. the big thing too. Automation. Yeah, I think every every single person. I think close to every single person that I brought in the booth and did an interview with, they mentioned labor shortage. Right, and it's such a and it's still going on. So yeah, yeah, and you know the automation theme, and, and, and I remember specifically talking about that at Modex. Mm-hmm. That was like wow. Right. I looked at the seminar list this year. So it's like. Yeah, roughly 160 or so, give or take. Yeah. 45% of the titles had robotics or automation in the title. Yeah. It's like, holy, <laughs> we know, and again, another big trend. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And, and you know, I think it's pretty prevalent. We walk into the, the show here, and it hits you right away, robotics, yes. automation, everywhere, right? Yeah. But tell us a little bit from the the power perspective and the, the energy perspective, you know, what are the, the big trends that are going on there? Yeah, so for us, we're really happy to see all of it because it's, mm-hmm. it's electric power for the most part. Right. You know, you've got those trends going on in general anyway to, to drive to electrification for a variety of reasons. Mm-hmm. But with, with automation in particular, you're seeing power needs reflected there with, I don't want to do any maintenance because, again, mm-hmm. it's automated, right. so I don't want to have to put a person to do some of that stuff. In our booth this year, we're running a, a, a live wireless charger with, with an AGV vehicle. Right. We don't make the AGV. JVT put it in the list, so we mm-hmm. partnered with them to show it at the, nice. at the booth. And it's running and charging, and you know, when you look at that, mm-hmm. uh, it's kind of exciting because it's charging our lithium battery, and you think about automation, so automated guided vehicles, 
well, but sometimes I, if I don't if I don't have hot shoes or I'm not direct working on a connection, I might have a person plug in. Or right. if I am running hot shoe connections, which is very typical, those will wear, and I need to have a person replace those. Well, mm-hmm. don't have wear and tear on a wireless charger, and when that HEV hits the charging stand because it's programmed in, there's no one that needs to do anything. So right. you're seeing that true automation, and then the maintenance-free products really lend themselves well to that because. You know, typically, and for us, we have Finplay Pure Lead and Lithium Ion, both. You know, a rapid recharge, high power, no maintenance, mm-hmm. all of that saves energy, be more efficient, and save water. That's been a yeah. a little bit of, and it shouldn't be, but you know, a, 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 the surprise again on the sustainability thing. People mm-hmm. are looking at that sort of stuff. They say, "Hey, we've got water conservation goals mm-hmm. that people want to hit, companies want to hit." And so, when you look at flooded lead acid battery, which we make a lot of, right? going to a maintenance and you're not watering it. So there's a yeah. sub- and, and the math is kind of crazy how much water it can save hundreds of thousands of gallons really? in a large facility, you know, yeah. with flooded as you can work. Yeah. So you've got all that. And, you know, in addition, you're, you're, you're seeing the trends of IC to electric. Mm. Carb on the West Coast you know, is, is driving some of that, the carbon reduction. Mm. But then just as we're moving inside the facilities, you don't want carbon monoxide being generated. Yeah. So you're, you're doing that. So yeah. Lots of that sort of stuff. So some of those trends have been happening and continue to happen, but then you see these other trends, the bigger trends that are accelerating some stuff. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I think it's an interesting point about the, the water. I, I never thought about that from, from that perspective because I, I think uh, we've talked about sustainability in, in the past around the, the batteries. It's mm-hmm. about, you know, the, the waste and yeah. the recycling. Energy savings, yeah. recycling, yeah. exactly yeah. right. Yeah. But then you come and say, oh, I can do that. You know, it was mm-hmm. interesting. So I, I did a seminar yesterday, and one of the stats that I had done some research on was the number of companies that now offer or, or issue a sustainability report. So. Mm-hmm. 11 years, in, 20, in 2011, 20% of the S&P 500 companies, I think, mm. would issue one. Today, in 2022, I believe the statistic is 96%, 95, 96% of S&P 500 companies yeah. issue a sustainability report. Wow. 80, 80% or so of the Russell 1000 public mm. companies do it. So you're looking at this as not, as not just a, a fad. Mm. This is a trend, and people are looking at all of that stuff. So when you do sit down and look at your operation, which is... One of the things that we're, our, our group is really working with, the Lunas team, mm. work with the customer to think through some of that stuff. Right? Yeah. Like, let's not just take some of that stuff for granted, but sit down and say, okay, if we really put pen to paper, I mean, we use a, a modeling program called Insight, but we start looking at those things, what are all the ways your power decision right. impact other areas? Mm-hmm. So, tremendously important. The CEO of our company signed a water savings goal. I mean, as part of as, as part of the public utility really? company, we signed on to that. Yeah. We're putting a farm of solar panels in our corporate headquarters. We were, we're in Reading, mm-hmm. Pennsylvania. We have yeah. a lot of space doing that to offset carbon emissions from our plant. So again, sustainability. And we've heard a lot of it here at the show. So yeah. We see a lot of that stuff. Step, step, step. Do you know how many steps your warehouse workers are taking a day? When your workers are walking, you're losing money. Endless trips to the printer or computer add up fast. Newcastle's mobile industrial carts with integrated power eliminate the walking to stationary printers and computers, keeping workers focused on high value tasks. Often, doubling their output thousands of powered cart installations including ones at the new warehouse's own micro fulfillment center and in my previous jobs prove that newcastle customers get more done and save money to learn more head to newcastle sys.com that's newcastle sys.com very interesting and i think it's a it's a great thing and i think companies are you know, obviously, consumers have been, you know, thinking about sustainability for some time. I think so they're more and, ahead of the Yeah, yeah. And now they're kind of pushing these companies to, to think about it in a more sustainable, you know, sustainable way and a more so wide, widely reaching, yeah. right? And you know, it's, it makes a, a lot of sense. And you know, as you start to really 
look at it and, and take apart the, the pieces that you can do better on like you start to I guess realize those things like the water savings like which is pretty like I, like I just said I, yeah. I didn't even think about that yeah. like, it, it is a thing right so it's really great to, to hear that so tell it tell us a little bit too now about this uh, the wireless charging solution I, I know that we've we've talked about this a, a couple times and right. it's becoming like more and more it's real now real yeah. Thing. so yeah, yeah I think in, in 2019 we were showing our first concept of it and yeah. it out mm-hmm. um, and, and so it's taken us that time to get it commercially available through all of its testing phase you know mm-hmm. the pandemic with uh, sl- slowed things down a little bit from yeah. an electronics yeah. perspective because you knew you couldn't <laughs> For get a lot chips. Of people. Yeah, yeah right but <laughs> but now it's out so integrated in with in, you integrated in with the truck which is where we're starting for the AGV world mm-hmm. and eventually we'll move it into manual operation where you could, right. you could do what we have now but AGVs again we, we started there because it just it, it removes that last bit of non-automation if you mm, will the human right. interaction the one we're showing it has a, a front mounted charging pad so the way it works is you have a charging unit with a charging mm. pad we call it a primary in, in, internally yeah. and then a secondary which is your equipment pad that's what's getting mount, gets mm-hmm. mounted on the truck here it's we've got it mounted on the front of the truck you can put it on the side of the truck you can put it underneath and put, mm. put a pad on the floor it really depends on how you want to integrate it in the facility mm. so that secondary pad is connected to a power converter which then charges the battery so yeah. in our case with our wireless will work with our lithium-ion product, or things like your lead product, and flood it. Because mm-hmm. again, I've got that secondary device specific to that battery. Right. So you may have multiple technologies coming and, and working against that one wireless charger. Mm-hmm. Typically with AGVs, you might see three, four, or five vehicles all with their own secondary pads that will come back to the primary, uh-huh. just on schedule. Right? Yeah. It's all programmed. Mm-hmm. Robot doesn't care. Yeah. Come in, probably do their 20-minute charge, and away they go. So. It's just kind of a game changer, right? You think mm-hmm. about it. So that has been a big drawner, but people are very excited about it to see, you know, that factored in with our battery mm. as one integrated system. Right. The, the truck and the battery are tar- talking, so it knows, okay, if I get to a certain level of discharge, I need to go and recharge. Hook up, Typically, yeah. you'll just program it in. It's like, mm-hmm. okay, on the run, go hit the charger for a bit and mm. then move on. And again, simply pure lead and lithium ion are really good at our, what we call partial state of charge yeah. or you know opportunity charging mm-hmm. whenever you can so it looks like really well. yeah. it's very exciting it's cool too yeah yeah definitely and i think it's you know, having the wa- wireless charging situation is like way way overdue i think right yeah. I, yeah. I mean it makes total, yeah. sense, total to, sense to bring it in and, and be able to give that that flexibility because you know i mean one of the one of the issues that, you know is you know forget the operator sometimes they forget to plug in right and then right. the next shift is you know, kind of like screwed a little bit. A- absolutely <laughs> and so that's where you know we want to work this where we move it into what we call manual trucks yes right? is, yeah is where they're going to park the truck they just park and mm-hmm. It charges because they've put it in the right place. Everything yeah. works. It just charges up. And, you know, we tend to take a really big system approach in the way we do stuff. Mm-hmm. So, you know, our batteries and our chargers working, uh, collecting all that data. So in sort of right. an IoT environment. So not only do you get battery to charge, you're talking in battery to truck charge talking, mm-hmm. right. but you're getting that data also as, a, as, a, as an operator or a manager in a facility mm-hmm. or maybe a manager of multiple facilities. You're looking at how all of that works together. Um, and, 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 you know, where we're working in our data world, right, mm-hmm. in our IoT world, is prognostics and predictives to yeah. sort of say, hey, Kevin, you know, here's how your trucks are operating and here's what the batteries are looking like and you've got, an, you know, something's going on here. Maybe they're not plugging in or parking right mm-hmm. or, or they're not just getting, you know, you're seeing some, some we want to call out problems yeah. to allow you to fix them. So yeah. things like that. So there's, there's, that's the next round for that. All right. All right. We'll be looking forward to that definitely. Yeah. And I, I think it's such a, it's a great thing to be able to take this technology and you know take it to the next level. And, and just seeing, I think, in our our space overall, the material handling industry. I mean, it's it's crazy to think. You know, we, I mean, we referenced Promet 2019 a couple of times here, but it's crazy to think just even how much the technology has grown since those four years has gone past, right? Well, you know, it's funny because as I was thinking about our talk, it's like. Well, we're together, and yes, we do our modexes, but yeah. you, know, you think about the pro mask, because it's been four years, and really, things have changed a lot in yeah. that time frame. Yeah. So it's cool. Yeah. It's all good. This is a great industry. It's so much fun, <laughs> and it's just vital. And you know, hey, the pandemic proved that, right? We all yeah. wanted stuff to d- deliver to our house. Mm-hmm. Forklift touched every bit of it, and it had to be powered oh, by yeah. something. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, even I was talking to somebody earlier this morning. I mean, even you know, if we look here in the the uh, uh, the recording place here, the the facility itself. I mean, 
even if we needed forklifts to put all this stuff Get together. All this stuff yeah, on yeah, that. yeah, exactly. So it's, like, right. so it's really interesting. I mean, uh, no matter what, I mean, we need something that has forks on it in some way to, to move that that pallet and, and get that thing going. So, that, so that more ways and even like the little little improvements here and there that we can increase our our efficiency and operations and things is a, is a huge thing. So it's great that Enersys is able to, to look at that on the, the energy side and, and be able to do that. So, so I know typically in our discussion we we always kind of touch on where are we at with lithium. Right? Right. So are we still seeing like a lot of buzz from people asking about lithium? Absolutely. I mean, how, how are we looking? At that? Absolutely. Yeah, it is. You know, it's it's. It's again, it's the drive to maintenance free. So we've just introduced our 80 volt lithium product because we're yeah. seeing in Europe a lot of 80 volt, obviously. Mm -hmm. But you're seeing more 80 volt coming across the water, coming into North mm -hmm. America as you drive from class four and five to class yeah. one as we electrify. So yeah, you're looking at that. So the maintenance free drive is there. So lithium uh, is there. Lots of interest because you know it solves some needs. Yeah. Again, it's that maintenance free. Uh, mm -hmm. so you, you look at that. So. And again, Enersys, we're lucky in that we have a thin plate pure lead product as well. Mm. It's a maintenance repair. It's a lithium-like experience. And we tend to approach it from a hybrid perspective. Right. We don't do it blindly. It's all with our in-site modeling. So we're mm -hmm. going to sit down and talk to someone about what trucks they have, what kind of power are they using. So again, when we do a power study, put a device on a, on a truck and see it. Right. Or we'll help sit down and say, okay, well, we know what your trucks draw. What kind of demand are you seeing? What shifts are you working? How many brakes mm -hmm. do you got? Blah, 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 blah. Plug all that in. And then what we'll do is we'll work with that customer because, you know, lithium's perfect for heavy duty. Mm -hmm. Think that pure lead, light to medium duty. There is a price difference between yes. us. Yeah. So working with the customer for that, modeling it, you may find a hybrid solution. Mm -hmm. we'll, take, we'll solve their problem for a little less money mm -hmm. for less money. And that's perfectly good. You know, these right. recyclability differences between the two products. Lithium is still very early in the recyclability stream. Lead is, you know, 97, 98% recyclable. Mm -hmm. So you look at those sorts of things. But I think that's where, you know, when you're doing that, you can come and offer the customer to make this free experience if they mm -hmm. want. It hits a number of those boxes for them. And then you can put the right product in the right application. In my mind, I think customers don't, either don't, you know, are they asking for lithium because they must have lithium, or are they really asking, look, I just want to get out of doing all this other stuff. That yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think that's really what it is, because that's what yeah. we're finding. Right, yeah. All right. And again, the system approach. Have it tied in with your charger. Mm -hmm. Make sure the charger's doing it properly. Pull all that information. You know, we're enter SIS. We always say that SIS really is system. system I, yeah. it's, it's, you know, you, you've got to... All of the stuff we do in our consumer world is, mm -hmm. is controlled and systemized, and it works right. really well. And that's what we tend to try to do. So yeah. we think yeah. about it as a system. Yeah, and I think that's a great way to, to go about it. I mean, even you know, as we look at, I know not just the, the energy solutions, but even all the solutions that are around us here. You know, being able to, to take that actual information, that data, and, and transform it into you know Make what's actionable. Yeah, yeah, what's actionable, what's the right solution yeah. versus like, oh, I heard about this solution. I guess maybe I need it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I think. Yeah, yeah I get yeah. something on my phone. What is that? do for me uh, okay let's let's work on yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly right <laughs> definitely so so always great to talk to you harold and, and really appreciate you coming by giving us the the scoop on the the energy side of things and, and kind of what's going on with enersys as well if people are interested in learning more about enersys how can they do that we have a number of ways well if you're still here at the show come and see us yeah. but enersys.com is our website mm -hmm. all kinds of contact information there you, know, you can follow us on linkedin we have all kinds of stuff there but enersys.com is probably the best source Check us out there. Check us out at LinkedIn. All Let's right. For us on podcasts. Definitely. Definitely. This podcast. This one here. On exactly this right. This one. Yeah. <laughs> exactly right. So we we'll definitely put all that information at thenewwarehouse.com as well so people can easily find it. So, Harold, thank you once again for coming by. My pleasure, Kevin. Always a pleasure. Thank you. You've been listening to the New Warehouse Podcast with Kevin Lawton. Subscribe and check us out online at thenewwarehouse.com. Thank you for listening to this episode. If you want more content from the new warehouse, check out our new video series called All Hands on LinkedIn. Just search for the new warehouse on LinkedIn and follow along.